what is going on everybody welcome back to another episode of lock pop talks and um thank you everybody who showed me some uh, you know birthday love who sent some messages um caught the last episode i'll make sure i include a clip from last week's episode into this week's episode so you guys can uh you know get a preview of what it is that we talked about um it was uh, a good great birthday actually um a lot of love a lot of family friends co-workers uh, spent some time with the family and i really enjoyed myself being 35 35 oh my goodness it i, I just pray that it's a great year you know of growth and I know that also includes a season of, or maybe many seasons of trials and tribulations, but with God by my side and ahead of my life, I welcome them because I know that no matter what it is, I can be brought through them with grace and with, with, with great help. And I want to extend that same grace and prayer and devotion to you the listener as well so again thank you all for the birthday love i'm hoping that i'm here next year we can uh, continue to celebrate that love um if your birthday is coming up or if, uh maybe it's in december maybe it's in january maybe you know whatever month of the year it is make sure you write it down in the comment section i want to write it down and keep you guys in our prayers and also to give a shout out for your recognition and for your birthday as always you can catch the website www.tyreewilson.com where you can listen to and subscribe to um, the podcast that I create every single week. There's also a free devotional prayer journal that is free for you to have when you do sign up. So today's episode. Today's episode is something that kind of hit me as I was watching a YouTube trailer for Terminator, right? You know, Terminator Dark Fate had come out into the movie theaters and yeah well as far as reviews go it didn't do too well however while watching the trailers for it on youtube i came across a scene in one of the older um terminator movies i can't remember which one it was i um i can't remember which one it was but i think it was terminator salvation and, I, and there was a scene in the in the movie where this little girl who was walking or running a from a terminator with john connor comes across a fuel cell that powers up the terminators right and he stopped the little girl from touching the fuel cells and explained to her that those fuel cells are nuclear everybody understand and one of the characters asked well what does that mean that they're nuclear what does that mean for us and while they were in the processing plant for the terminators john kind of explained that the that the terminators uh, energy core has the ability to level the processing plant so that's kind of like my the, the basis of where this came from, and it, but it also brought me to an important point of this week's episode, and that is called going nuclear, going nuclear while fighting for your marriage. Not saying that this is something that you're going through personally, um, because I don't know exactly what it is you are going through, what stage of your stand that you're going through, whether you're standing or choose not to, or maybe you're in a restoration. I brought it up because I remember that this point happened not only to me, but also happened to my wife, and I wanted to talk about it here on the podcast. And so when we talk about being nuclear, you know, what does it mean? What does being nuclear mean in the first place? And I want to use the um, official definition for a nuclear bomb. Hold on. Let me, uh, because they gave me the definition for a nuclear or an atomic bomb. But they say a nuclear bomb, a nuclear weapon is an explosive device that derives its destructive force from from nuclear reactions. Both reactions release vast quantities of energy from relatively small amounts of matter. Now, I say small amounts of matter as it pertains to your life. Small amounts of matter and the way I want to use it is situations that happen. People saying certain words, actions that uh that happened to you or around you or maybe that you're involved with which kind of breaks the camel's back both reactions release vast quantities of energy from relatively small amounts of matter so situations that happen in your own life that could possibly happen in your life or things that normally wouldn't bother you you know and so if i had to take myself for an example things like finding out what's for dinner taking care of the chores scheduling meetings with my with my kids teachers um so maybe something happened at work 
I did not, you know, stop at the gas station, so I almost ran low on gas, and because I ran low on gas, I had to stop at the gas station, and I ended up being late for work, which is relatively small issues. However, I have an explosion when I get home, or I have an explosion um, at work or something like that. Maybe I have an internal explosion where no one's around but me, and I have a mental breakdown. This has happened to me during my stand. Um, another example is kind of like what happened to my wife, so... I don't know if she's listening, but hey, honey, if you're there, <laughs> if she ever catches this podcast, when uh, say there was something that happened with the girls, maybe she, maybe the girls didn't clean up the house or their chores the way that we expected them to. Maybe they have not given thanks for the meal that she prepared for them to have. Whatever the case may be, if they've given her any type of slack, I've seen my wife respond to them in a way that it just felt unwarranted right but through her shouting or her her being upset with the kids or the attitude or her reaction i can see that this the the situation that we were going to through this pending divorce between the two of us it wasn't so much um it wasn't like disciplining the girls or having a stern conversation with them so they understand what you're coming from like a, like a mother to her children but it was like the tone of voice that she used the way it sounded she was in the middle of like shouting she was shrieking if you guys understand like what it means to shriek it's in my in the way i understand it is talking to somebody and your voice starts hitting like those different um octaves if you will like it's really sharp scream or shouts and i don't know if you guys understand what i'm talking about maybe it's hard to um <laughs> to 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 illustrate for you over audio but if you guys ever seen someone who's shouting you know for help or something like that like screaming when they're scared that type of shriek is what i mean but you're not sh you're not shouting and screaming as though you're in pain or you're in fear you're shouting because you're angry and you're angry at something that has nothing to do with the current situation that you're involved with that's what i mean by going nuclear so i'm gonna explain to you guys um the Urban Dictionary website, um, www.urbandictionary.com, explains the term um, as it pertains to everyday conversation about going nuclear. And what they explain is this, going nuclear, taking things to the absolute extreme in order to avoid a series of small escalations. This can be a way of winning a fight you might not otherwise win, but has the potential to destroy both people involved. That is exactly what I mean when it comes to going nuclear as being a, a, a term that people use. Um, they wrote down some examples. I'll read them off to you. Example, a kid tells you that your hat is ugly, so you tell him Santa isn't real. Or you tell him that your friend makes a joke about the way you mispronounce things and embarrass you, embarrasses you in front of others, so you tell her that her boyfriend is cheating on her. That's what I mean by going nuclear your reaction is just it's it's a it's a act of devastation you mean to destroy people which i find to be an issue as as far as people in today's world in society and especially in marriages like when people want to take care of the issues when they feel like they're at fault with what happened in their marriage a lot of those people want to handle things um, discreetly you know in house behind closed doors and if that's you and that's what you're going through then hey you do what you got to do i'm not here to judge you about that however there are some people like those who who want to get a divorce um they have a tendency to want to blow things up even more like if you're angry at them or you have a way to question them or maybe you've pushed them in a certain direction or maybe you you they've grown tired of you in some kind of way well their trump card for some for some prodigals not all some of them decide to get a divorce you know they use that as a way to destroy you not and, not, and you know what it's not even the divorce it's not even just a divorce sometimes they want to do the divorce and then they want to they want to they'll cheat on you before the divorce or they'll talk about you in such a negative way while they're going through the divorce and that's all you hear is the devastation of their words and their actions as they want to as they continue down the path of wanting to get a divorce and they leave the standard confused wondering like why do they why do they say what they say or why are they saying such things and why do they act a certain way this is kind of painful this is like 
it's uh, like filibustering. This is more than what we thought we were dealing with at first. What happens before you go nuclear, before either yourself or your spouse, spouse goes nuclear? When you're bottling up your emotions until that explosion happens, the explosion can be uh, what leads to irresponsible actions, drinking, um, unprotected sex with someone beside your partner, maybe you're doing drugs, a lack of self-care. Maybe you're not motivated. Maybe you um, you focus more on the negative side of things, thinking that if you change you to suit your ex or your pending ex's approval, that that will make them happy. And nine times out of 10, it's not what happens. In fact, if you try to change yourself so dramatically to someone else's approval, they tend to not like you anymore. You know, they, they, they care about you even less because you didn't stand up for yourself. You just kind of you kind of ran with that. Nobody, everybody wants to be with somebody that they can grow with that kind of pushes them to be better than what they were the other day. Not too many people find love and comfort in somebody who does every single thing that they want, that gives them everything they want, that does every single thing that they tell them to do. Though it may be in a term of endearment on your part or from a standards part, maybe that's something you want to do. But I've seen how the spouse who wants to get divorced or the one who's fighting for the divorce, that does not bring them back. Changing who you are to suit their needs does not change what they want ultimately from you. They're still going to leave. They're still going to file um, the divorce. They're still going to... They're still going to use everything that you want to change, every bit of motivation and effort that you put into the relationship. They're going to use that against you. Turn it, spin it any kind of way um, and make it seem like you're being manipulative. And we both know that's not what's happening. You're actually you're panicking because you're willing to do anything in order to make things work. This is a hard part about teaching people to stand their ground, because when what some people follow, what some standards follow is based on the Bible that you stand no matter what. And I agree. I agree with that, that you should stand no matter what. However, there's a difference between standing for your marriage and then acting like a fool, you know, like or playing the part of the fool. I don't mean that being foolish because being being faithful and devoted can lead to you looking like a fool. You know, you you know, when everyone else is telling you to move on with your life, you're saying, no, I can't. This is what I this is what I'm called to do. And I advocate that you continue to do that. However, if you find yourself giving into everything that your spouse says that they want about they they don't like about you, maybe they don't like the way you dress. They don't like the way you talk. They don't like the way you you breathe. They don't like the way you eat. Like it doesn't matter. And then you're chasing all these things. You're chasing them. You're chasing them. You're chasing them. You want to take care of the home. You want to take care of yourself. You want to take care of your spouse. You want to take care of your business. You want to take care of your finances. You want to take care of the kids. And you're doing all of those things. If you do not take the time to slow down, to tell them, listen, I understand that there's some changes that need to be made, but these type of changes um, cannot be done overnight. And some of these are not the some of the changes that you're asking for are not me as a person. Like, I, you know, you can't you can't tell somebody that they don't run fast enough and you expect them to run faster. You know, like uh, all of a sudden they're supposed to run faster, that they don't have sex with you the way that you like. And then the next day they're supposed to give it to you exactly like that. That's very one sided. It's very selfish because maybe the spouse that you're with, maybe they're more passionate than aggressive, you know, and vice versa. Maybe they're more aggressive with with their love making to you than they are passionate. And it's not that you choose one or the other. It's just a mix of both. And that's where uh, marriage has to have the space for that to happen. If you do not have that space, if you don't allow yourself to have that space, then it will destroy you internally. It will destroy you mentally until you have to like a fusion, like the fusion energy of a nuclear bomb, you will explode. You will let that energy out one way or another, and you will attack your partner. 
you'll attack you'll attack your family you know your mom your dad your brothers sisters uncles aunts whatever you'll attack them you will attack your children and they won't even know what you've done like i said earlier the example of my wife you know shouting but more like shrieking at the kids where you can hear that she's upset or or she's trying to be stern with them but with that with that uh discipline in that in that shouting that she had done i heard a pain and a shriek in her voice as though she was angry about something else and you know after conversation with her she was i found out and we kind of discovered that yeah she was where she was angry about something that kind of crept up in her mind but made its way out into reality to let it out not only will you attack your spouse or your partner or friends family your children you'll also start attacking your own ideals and your own morals once you start attacking those now it's now it's the devil's play playground you you know it's the enemy's playground you'll attack what you even think about marriage i'll never get married again i will never this i will never that maybe my life was supposed to be this pointless maybe there's nothing i can do to better myself as a person and then you start telling yourself that then you start behaving that way then you stop caring about yourself well you just play right into the enemy's hands going nuclear while fighting for your marriage is a real thing it can happen so what happened with me personally in my own life i had gone nuclear I um, I was talking to my mother the night my wife told me that she wanted to get a divorce. Or maybe, yeah, it was the night or either the next night. The next, yeah, the next night. Either way, my mother tried to talk me out of being so angry, wanting to, um, wanting to kind of like get back at my wife for wanting to get a divorce because I was very angry. And... I was listening to my mother speak to me and she's trying to calm me down and she wants me to understand, you know, try to break things down like I do with other people and then with, with clients and whatnot, ask important questions. I got to get to the point of the problem. However, all those questions did nothing but anger me even more. So I would answer my mom's question, but then her next question I would answer and then I'd start getting a little annoyed and then she'd ask me another deep penetrating question and I didn't want to deal with that question, but I answered it because it was my mom. So then she asked another question that was leading us down a certain process she wanted me to get to and I just like lost it. You know, it wasn't that, um, it wasn't that my mother was trying to upset me and I know she wasn't. It wasn't that, you know, even when I talked to my father or my pastor, these people were not trying to upset me. And I understand that. But during the time I was going through mental anguish and pain as to what was happening, I felt like it was happening to me. So when people ask all those questions, I lost my patience and I would go off and I, and I wouldn't go off on them saying that they're, you know, like a waste of breath and all that stuff. However, I would shout back like, um, oh, man, what's what's a what's a good example? Um, you know, my mom says something about make sure you take care of the girls during this time and then i would say something at the top of my lungs like i am taking care of my kids you know what i'm saying like I, and then that's what i mean and i was angry because of my reaction and then i was angry because my mom had reacted to that too you know she didn't re she did not uh, appreciate me going off like that or raising my voice to her over the phone when i'm on the phone calling her however she gave me enough grace to say i know that you're hurting right now tyree you know, I don't appreciate you raising your voice at me. I know that you're hurting right now. Let's try to find a way for you to one, calm down and think this thing through. Before you do anything, you will regret. And I appreciate my mom for saying such a thing because my pastor said the same thing. I, my, my father said the same thing. So as this ball of of energy and emotion and reaction that I had to anybody that I would speak to, I was slowly shifting these people's day you know the their, their their day because anytime they see my name flash across their phone or, or 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 facebook messenger or anything like that they know like okay this is tyree's calling he does need help however he's going to explode at some point as at some point in his conversation he's going to get really angry because he's still very emotionally invested as to what's happening and there's only so much that you can talk to him about before he loses his cool Going nuclear while fighting for your marriage is a real thing. And you can lose friends and family behind that. People who just don't want to deal with you. And to family and friends who do help you, who are there or around, 
Um, I thank God for them because they'll stick with you through the storm. And there's people that even if your friends or family aren't the ones that kind of stick around, maybe you can you'll discover like somebody like a mentor or a coach or something like that that you can speak to a counselor or a therapist. Um, you know, maybe maybe a coworker, somebody who you could talk to who's willing to listen to what it is you have to say and maybe they have experience in the area that you are dealing with can offer you not only a ear but some word and some wisdom to chew on something to think about as you continue to grow in your own stand so i attacked my mom verbally i you know i i, I responded a certain kind of way just like my wife did even though she wanted to initiate the divorce she was still going through her own thing and this is something that you learn about being in your own stand is that divorce is a reaction to um it can be a reaction to multiple things however your prodigal spouse is not they're not incapable of understanding how much pain a divorce can cause they know what it's causing because they're going through it too you know going through divorce is like it's like losing a loved one it's like a death in the family you know to someone close to you because it's it's very it's it, it initiates a grieving process it's a sense of loss that uh, uh, pretty much half your life um somebody who shares their life with you has just disappeared you know and it takes some time to get through maybe they don't feel it at first but they will eventually feel it and so they too are capable of understanding that going nuclear even if you're not fighting for your marriage is a real thing so how does this tie in like what does what happens when god is involved you know what what is it okay to be angry is it okay to tell the lord how you feel about certain things is it okay to get out what's bothering you to not let things bottle up and i'm going to tell you right now it is absolutely essential it's essential to you that you must get out what angers you why it's angered you and to be honest not only with yourself and and those who listen to you but being honest with god because to carry anger within you right unchecked anger that's that becomes a sin because it's anger that boils over without restraint you know in which case the anger that's in you the the hurt that's with that's within you it multiplies and then you start including other people into your explosion like a nuclear bomb you start including things that had nothing to do with you maybe you have a neighbor you know they like you stop talking to your neighbors you stop you know you stop caring about yourself you go to the store and you don't care what you eat your diet plummets because you're angry at something or maybe you're you're you look in the mirror and you don't like the kind of body you have that's the type of thing that holding a grudge or an anger that's not pacified that's what it does to you it destroys everything in its wake however being angry with being angry with your situation and taking the time to let the lord know how angry you are and in what ways it helps because god allows us to feel emotions and anger is an emotion anger is an emotion um you know some people say well it's more like a choice i get that i understand it's a choice as well however it is an emotion it's a god-given feeling that we have and we are allowed to be angry for one reason only to recognize when our boundaries are being pushed When your boundaries are being pushed, when your boundaries have reached a point that they feel violated, anger is the first alarm that goes off. You're angry because somebody has taken your clear boundaries and have gone too far. Or you have not established your boundaries you've gotten to a stage of your life where you've been cool with everybody doing what everybody wants you to do where you are just you're a ball of sunshine for everyone because your boundaries you seem boundless you know what i'm saying you seem boundless and so people appreciate that because they have boundaries that they want respected and acknowledged and uh, understood and you're one of those people who accepts other people's boundaries until somebody pushes your own and you realize holy crap either i do have boundaries or i don't and this is why you go through or a prodigal spouse even you know a prodigal or standard doesn't matter you will go through a stage of your life where you feel like everyone's attacking you 
your whole world is crumbling everybody has something to say about you every situation you're in doesn't last long because somebody something comes along and destroys that life which you've created for yourself they destroyed the pathway that you were happily going down because it was leading to a certain goal that you you coveted and it is destroyed and you're angry and you tell yourself okay i'm never going down that way again and then you meet someone in your life who 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 makes uh, let's say going to school or, or building your career or building your life spiritually or mentally or financially anybody who who's along those lines who make things a little harder than usual it doesn't matter what their name or what their face is they you're constantly having to deal with the attitude and the personality types and the attacks and the abrasions that certain people bring into your life well when do you get to a point of your life where you understand that it's not the people that are attacking you it is your lack of boundaries standing your ground is as far as the brand from me if you guys listen to me in any sense of the word is not about uh, it's not just about your marriage it's not just about your marriage it is about how is about taking what's happened in your life so many times in so many years and you're taking the finger instead of pointing it at everyone else, you're pointing it at yourself. I came up with that brand because of my own personal issues. And that's the only that's really the only area that I can speak on because I can't speak for you. And for a long time, I, I, I had different jobs because I was always trying to make something of myself. I was always trying to prove myself of something. I couldn't tell you what, but I guess in, in, in a culmination of all the things that I did, I was just trying to make myself better. I was trying to make myself validated, you know, trying to make myself valuable. Um, and, and that stems into a whole branch of different conversations and categories we won't talk about just yet, but maybe one day, <laughs> maybe one day we will. However, I want it to be the man i wanted to be the best dad i wanted to be a good son-in-law i wanted to be a good son i wanted to be a good husband I, I mean not just good i wanted to be excellent and i wanted to be a great friend and i wanted to be a better basketball player like i wanted all of those things so in order to do that i felt i had to um i had to push to make everybody around me happy in order to attain that title of best of this best of that and when I did that, I had to take a lot of flack from people growing up. I had to take a lot of flack from people um, when I finally attained, when I felt like I attained um, certain statuses like that in other people's eyes, right? And whenever I felt like that that title or that value was, um, was that the value was, uh, oh my God, confronted or, or tested or tempted, then I would lose myself. I would get angry with those people. Not just a little angry. I'm talking big, big angry. Like I would have a certain reaction. I would want to fight somebody that I never like consider fighting before because, and people would say, well, wow, how did you get to that point? Like we was here and now you're so angry. And I was, and I couldn't tell you why then, but I could tell you now that because I was bottling so many things up, my boundaries, there weren't any. I, I, my boundaries were really established in the value that came from other people and when that value did not come to me then my anger came out i went nuclear on those people when i felt like what was owed to me never came to fruition that's something that that's anger you know that's nuclear anger that turned into a sin and it wasn't these people that I spoke to that freed me of that pain or of that anger. It wasn't my wife, you know, like it wasn't her because a lot of people said that when they when they got to know me on a certain level, they were like, you, you're much different than we thought you were. You know, there's the face you put on, then there's the then there's the actions behind it. There's the words behind it and say, well, you're a lot different than we thought you were. And I didn't know whether that was, you know, a negative connotation or maybe a backhanded comment. I wasn't quite sure at the time. However, a lot of people were saying that. So instead of worrying about why they were saying it, I was focused on who was saying it. You know, whether it came from my mother-in-law or family member, um, a friend, a co-worker, um, you know, an old friend or something. It didn't matter. I was only, I was only, I was attacking who said it instead of why they said it. 
and then it came to a point where now my wife wanted to get a divorce for the way that I acted. So for a long time, I didn't want to fight for my marriage because I felt like I, I should be good enough. You know, I should be good enough. What I do should be good enough. And if you don't see the value in that, then oh well. And that's not true. This, God allowed this to happen in my life because he wanted me to see this is not about uh, it's not about who's saying things to me. It's how I carry myself. It's my attitude. It's the it's the way that I thought the world works as as it pertains to my own um, thoughts and desires and the things that I cared about, which was wrong and, 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 is, and is without God. But he didn't use my wife. He didn't use just my wife. He didn't use just my mother-in-law. He didn't use my children. He didn't use my home. He used all of it. But what got me was uh, an understanding that if I didn't let go of my old ways of thinking, my foolish ways of thinking, if I couldn't ad and adjust and refocus my attitude, then I was about to lose everything I fought so hard to have that God had graced me enough to even experience. I had to let go of a mindset of revenge, resentment, and anger that I carry in my early 20s up until my early 30s. And when me and God, or more so God than me, when I attended the meeting that he set up for me, I changed. And I changed in a way that was greater and deeper than even I could understand. Going nuclear is still a possibility for me. Going nuclear is still a possibility for you. However, recognize that it's okay to admit when you're angry and you should. What's not okay is attacking someone when you're angry, attacking people who had nothing to do with you being angry. And it's not okay to attack yourself when you're angry. Going nuclear when fighting for your marriage is a real thing, my listeners, and I don't want that for you. That's going to end today's episode, you guys. If you have made it this far, first of all, thank you. I know that was a lot to take in. Um, you know, it's really been on my mind. I just want to get that information out there to you guys. If you could hit the like, share, subscribe. It supports the podcast, helps the channel grow. You can also catch this show on uh, Spotify. You can catch it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, CastBox Podcasts, um, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all the social media sites. And like I said, you show your support. You can also send in questions or topics you have. Go to my website and click the contact form at www.tyreewilson.com. I read every single email and I will respond to you as quickly as I can. And if you like, we would also throw your questions and your concerns and comments up for an episode to record. Again, thank you guys all for being here and I'll check you out next time. Have a nice day.